My name is Miguel Ordignana. I'm a coordinator in the Citizen Science Office here at the Natural History Museum of LA County. As a coordinator in the Citizen Science Office, I do a lot of outreach and training um, of the public to get them involved in our research projects. Uh, some, most of them are in-house, but some of them are collaborations with other institutions. But most of those uh, citizen science projects use iNaturalist as the platform for our participants to submit data and for us to kind of communicate back with them. I've started a project with our collections manager called the Southern California Squirrel Survey. It's a project that focuses on the distribution of our local squirrel species. And we want to know, um, especially within the LA area, where the non-native eastern fox squirrel is in relation to the West, our native western gray squirrel, which are two, two tree squirrel species here in the LA area. The fox squirrel was introduced here in the early 1900s and has been spreading throughout the LA area and Southern California. And what we wanted to try and figure out was what new populations have been um, established since a previous research has been done, which was conducted in the early 2000s. They figured out that the Western Gray Squirrel population is declining. Um, and so we wanted to f kind of follow up on this using the citizen science uh, community to figure out exactly what their current distribution is and keep that up to date. Without iNaturalist, we wouldn't be able to kind of have this huge uh, geographic area, geographic coverage. And, uh, and so iNaturalist has been able to allow us to map where they, they are, but also there's options to add additional information through special fields to let us know some of the mechanisms these fox squirrels are potentially using to expand their range, for instance, we're asking people if they're on power lines because we know here in Southern California that's one of the main ways they've been able to expand their range. And whereas the Western Gray Squirrel really hasn't been taking advantage of that, we're basically proving where these animals are. And previous to that, all the research has been um, through boots on the ground, um, traditional wildlife surveys that were very limited in scope and scale. And so um, it's great to see that this iNaturalist data is really kind of proving the true status of the Western Gray Squirrel. It's not any better off than people thought or any worse off. It's actually where people think they always have been or currently are, excuse me. And as far as the fox squirrel, um, in general, this is what people expected. They'd be everywhere, and that's true, and people are documenting that using iNaturalist. The Western Gray Squirrels still have a stronghold in our local San Gabriel Mountains and Western Santa Monica Mountains, west of the 405 freeway, but uh, the Western Gray Squirrels um, are not between the 405 and the 101 within the Santa Monica Mountains, and so that's something that we are really kind of keeping a close eye on to see if they're able to reestablish, someone sees one um, pop up, uh, at some point. And in addition to that, Southern Orange County is kind of one of the new areas where the fox squirrel has kind of extended its range into and we kind of want to know without the help of, of telephone wires are they still able to kind of continue that expansion because in that portion of Southern California there's new development so a lot of those wires are underground. I think iNaturalist is, is kind of has um, a little bit of work that you have to put in when you first kind of open it up and start to learn it. But once you kind of figure out the basic steps, it's very easy, very user-friendly, and uh, we do trainings all the time here in, at the Natural History Museum, and we've taught people of all ages, including young children, and they get it. Um, and once they get the hang of it, they, they're kind of off and running. I totally recommend it for people that kind of want to expand the scope and scale of their research. Um, it definitely allows your research to to cover not only traditional study areas like public open spaces but urban areas and i think if you're an urban mammal researcher like myself or urban wildlife researcher in general i think it's incredibly useful because it makes it easy for people to participate if they can just use their app or just kind of plug their data into the computer i not just allowed you to kind of talk to a huge group of people at once through journal posts or one-on-one -on -one through messages um, or comments. And I think that's really key. And um, if you want to have a project in citizen science or on iNaturalist, I think making sure that you continue to be engaged 
with that community will keep your project alive. I'm really proud that, that so many people are interested in participating and I really like that we're focusing on squirrels because I'm a mammal person by trade. I've studied mammals for, for quite a while. Um, and to be able to offer a mammal project to our LA community and Southern California community is, is great because not everybody likes reptiles, not everybody likes insects or snails and slugs. And so for them to have something else to, to get involved in is great. And squirrels are perfect because they're out during the day and species like the fox squirrel are everywhere in any neighborhood. So it allows people from any background or neighborhood to be able to participate and really breaks down that barrier for people.